Right. So in um, section 7.3, we're going to look at um, a couple different things. We're going to look at some basic properties of logarithms. Okay, that'll be the first thing. That's pretty quick. Uh, then we're going to look at how we can take logarithms and either combine them together, okay, kind of like combining like terms. What, what can you combine? What can't you combine? Or how can we split them apart? Okay, either way. And then the last thing I'm going to show you guys is how you can type in other bases on your calculator besides the two that the calculator can do. What are the two bases the calculator can do again? Yep, base E and base 10. Okay. Those are the, the only two that the calculator can do just by pressing one button. So if you want to type in something other than those, there's a very simple formula um, to do it. Okay, so I'll show you that at the end. All right, so these first four properties we're going to look at um, are basically patterns to recognize. Okay, and when these special patterns come up, um, a lot of things are going to cancel out and the answer just comes out very nice. All right, so this says a raised to the log base a of m equals m. Okay, so what happens here is any time that the base on my exponential and the base on my log match, they cancel each other out. This part kind of disappears. And the only thing that's left, the answer, is whatever is right there. All right, so as an example, if we had 2 raised to the log base 2 of 5. Right, and I asked you to simplify that. This fits that pattern. This number and that number are the same. So that part basically cancels out. And what's the only thing you'd be left with? Five. That's it. Okay. If these numbers are different, this rule doesn't work. Okay, so whatever's here has to match whatever's here. And the final answer is the argument. Okay, whatever it happens to be. Okay, any question on that property? So there's no arithmetic, there's nothing you need to, to go through. You just have to recognize it in an example. Okay, we'll, we'll do a couple more. Okay, here's another one, a little, little bit different. It says log base A of A to the R equals R. So this one says as long as the base on your log and the base on your exponential in the argument, if those match, Okay, it's the same idea. Okay, cancels out, and the answer is whatever that exponent is. Right, so if I had something like log base 7 of 7 cubed, what would that be if we simplified? 2 of 3. 3, yeah. Okay, since the base on the log and the base on my argument match, they cancel each other out, and all I'm left with is that exponent. Okay, any question on that, that rule? All right, for this um, second one, let's look at why this one is, is true. Okay, we're going we're gonna to rewrite it a little bit right next to it, just so you can see the reason why this is true. All right, um, is this log form or exponential on the left? That's log. Okay, it's got the word log. It's got a base, an argument, and what's on the other side. Okay, Andy, what, what's my base here? A. Yep, that's my base. So A. Uh, ben, what's my exponent? A. R. R. Yep, remember, logarithm always equals your exponent. And Chris, what's left? Yeah, we're going to have equals. Tell me the whole thing that's left. A to the R. Right? We haven't used that yet. Okay, so we use the A. That's in red. We use the R. That's in blue. The whole thing we have left is A to the R. So that goes on the other side. Is that true? A to the R equals A to the R? What is that? Does anybody remember what that's called? 
when something equals itself. Think back to like geometry. If you said angle A equals angle A. Remember it begins with an R. Remember that reflexive. Okay, that's the reflexive property. So it's a property you've seen before, maybe not remember, but um, you have seen it. And it just says that something is always equal to itself. All right. Probably didn't recognize that by looking at it in log form. But rewriting it makes it very easy to see that's what it's saying. All right. So that's just the reason why this formula works. All right, let's try this one. Okay, rule three says that the log of one with any base is always zero. Okay, so log base A of one always equals zero. All right, let's, um, let's rewrite this in exponential form and see if we can see why this one's true. Um, Callie, what's my base here? Yeah, so my base is A. Okay, Charlie, what's my exponent? Zero. Okay, and Alex, what's the only thing I haven't used? One. Yeah, the one. So all this rule is saying is if you take anything and raise it to the zero power, you get one. That's a very basic rule from algebra one. Anything to the zero power is one. The only thing we did is we wrote it as a log rule. This is how you probably saw it in algebra one on the right hand side. Right. And our last property. Okay. It says log base A of A equals 1. Okay, so if you have a log and your base and your argument match, the answer is always 1. Okay, um, Derek, what's my base there? Uh, yeah, which one? The one right next to the log. Yeah, the one right next to the log. There's my base. Okay, Hannah, what's my <coughs> exponent? Uh, one. 1. Okay, that's my exponent. And Zach, what would you get if you take A and raise it to the first power? A. Yeah, you'd get itself back. It's right there. All right, so rule four is just saying if you take anything and raise it to the first power, it stays the same. You've probably seen it as an algebra rule. Maybe you've never seen it written like this as a log rule. It's exactly the same thing. That's all it is. Okay, so any questions on those, those four properties? Okay. We didn't go through why the first one's true. We're not. It, we could, but we're not going to. Okay. All right. So what I want to do is try to simplify that um, and tell me what rule you use to do it. Okay, one through four. Right. So, Tiffany, what, um, what rule does this one look most like? Picking rules one through four. It looks more like three. Okay, rule three. So rule three says we have to be taking the log of one. Yeah, I just got it. Um, so not, not log of one in this case. I'm too tired. I honestly don't know what I'm saying. See, Charlie? Yeah, that's rule one. It's where this number and this number match, and the logarithm is up as an exponent. Okay, that number and that number match. Okay, so when we simplify that, um, Nathan, what would I get? Pi. Yeah, we just get pi. That's it. Okay, whatever, whatever m is, okay, in this case it was pi, that's my answer. How about... Um, Example B. Okay, John, what, what rule does that one look like? Uh, two. Yeah, that's rule two. Okay, this time you have the word log first. You have a base and an argument that match. A base and an argument that match. Um, so John, what would I get for um, my final answer here? Mm, 
Nope, not point 0.2 to the negative 4. Negative 4. Just negative 4. Okay, your answer is whatever that exponent is. So in this case, just negative 4. Okay, questions on that one? All right, how about uh, C? What cool does that one look like? And it's, this one's a little, little tricky. I'm going to have a guess which rule that is. Yeah? It is. It's the second one. Can you, can you explain why? Because that's log e. Yes. And you have the e, kt, which is how it looks in the second one. Yep. Kln is really this, Okay. if you want to write it the long way. And now copy down the rest of it. This is just like what we did in the homework. So this is rule two. Your base and your argument match. So the answer here would be what? K times t. K times t. Yeah. Whatever k times t is. Okay. Uh, let's see. We didn't really do one for rule three or four. I'll just make up one. Okay. How about log base 12 of 12? Which rule is that? That's rule four. Yep. So what's the answer going to be here? One. Anytime your argument and your base are the same, the answer is just one. Okay, so any questions on those, those four properties? Yeah, I didn't, does anybody need one for rule three? It'd just be any time you take the log of 1. Okay, the base can be any no positive number you want. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, second part. Okay, so the second thing we're going to look at is how we can combine and split logarithms. Okay, and one of the properties that we learned here is also going to help us with the very last thing we do, which is how do we type something into the calculator that's not base 10 or base e? Okay, we've got to have a way to type that in. So here's our um, first property with logs. It says if you take the logarithm of a product, you can split that into two logarithms. And any time you have a product, it splits as a sum. Notice the base on the original log was a. When you split it, it's still base a, base a. The base never changes. Okay, my first argument is my first factor. My second argument is my second factor. Okay, so an example with numbers could look something like that. If you had log base a of 4 times 5, you can split it as log base a4 plus log base a5. Okay, and I'll, I'll do this on the calculator this time so you can, you can see that that works. Right, so I'm going to type in log of 4 times 5. And notice it doesn't matter what base you use. Okay, I could use any base I want. If I press that button, what base did I just decide to use? I'm using 10. Okay, if I wanted to use ln, I could do it with ln2. Right, so there's log 4 times 5. Okay, here's log 4 plus log comes out the same. Um, what is 4 times 5? 20. So what do you think another way I could do this is and I'd get the same answer? Log 20. Yep, I could do log 20. That'd come out the same. How about splitting it apart? 2 and 10. 2 and 10. Yeah, if you took the log of 2 plus the log of 10, you're going to get exactly the same thing. Any two numbers that multiply to give you 20, you could split with addition and get the same answer. Right? You could even use fractions. You could do 40 and a half. 40 times a half is 20. Okay. 
Any question on that first rule? All right, second rule. Instead of multiplying, now we're dividing. Okay, just one very small change. What do you think the difference is going to be on the right-hand side if we divide instead of multiply? Yeah, we're going to subtract. Okay. Log of the numerator minus log of the denominator. Keep the base the same when you split it. Okay, so if we have the logarithm of a fraction, we can split it as subtraction. Here's an example with numbers. I'm not going to type this one in. You could try it if you want on your own. But this says log base A of 4 fifths equals log base A4. Just make sure you write minus. Log base A5. Okay, any question on that? All right, and our last rule, and then we'll, we'll try some examples. This rule is important. Okay? Not only is it going to help us with doing what we're going to do right now, but it's also going to help us when we have to type stuff in the calculator. That's a different base. This formula is going to show us how we type it into the calculator. All right, so this rule basically says if you have an exponent, you are allowed to move it in front. If you have an exponent on an argument to a log function, you can take that and put it in front. Okay, and really, rule three, this is just like a, a shortcut for rule one. Okay. Let me show you something. What does three to the fifth power mean? Like if somebody doesn't understand exponents, how would you write out 3 to the 5th power? 3 times itself 5 times. Yeah. Just write 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 5 times. Okay. Whenever we have multiplication, how did we say multiplication splits up? Addition. Addition. If you multiply two things, it splits up as two things. If you multiply five things, what do you think it's going to split up as? Five things. five things. Log, 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 log. What's the base on each one of them? Ten. Yep, they're all 10. And what's going to be the argument in each one? Three. Three. Okay. So we have log base 10 of 3 plus log base 10 of 3. How many log base 10 of 3's do I have? <coughs> 5 log base 10 3's. Right. So that's why you can take the exponent and put it in front. It's really kind of like rule 1. But yeah, we're not going to write it out like this anymore. I'm just showing you for this one why it's true. Okay, So now anytime you've got exponents, put them in front. Okay, and from algebra, one thing they assume you already know, but I'm going to write it just in case you don't remember. Taking a square root is exactly the same as raising something to the one-half power. Take square root of 16, and here's 16 to the one-half power. Same thing. Okay, you'll see why you might want to change something from a square root to a one-half power. It's the same thing, but remember, when we have exponents, we can move them. All right, so that's, that's important. Okay, any questions on those three properties before we try some examples? All right. So the first ones we'll try... We'll take things that are already combined and we'll split them apart. All right, so Derek, first thing I want to decide is if I'm going to split this as a sum 
What difference? What do I have inside my argument? Is that multiplication or division? Multiplication. That's multiplication. Do you remember how multiplication splits up? And is it addition between the two parts or subtraction? Addition. Addition, good. Okay, each part is going to have a log. Okay, um, Dakota, what's my base on each log? Four. Yep, doesn't change. And Paige, what's my argument to the first log? Three. And my second log? X. X. That's it. So that's like the answer, like you almost solve anything? That's the answer. We stop there. Yep. Okay, any questions on that? All right, so that's a, that's a pretty easy one. It's really just one step and we're done. Um, but we'll practice a few easy ones and then we'll try one that's a little harder. But none of the problems up here are going to use anything ex except the rules I gave you. Just those three rules every time. All right, so Andy, is this one going to split as a sum or difference? And how do you know? Sum because it's multiplying. So we have log and log. Uh, Ashley, what's going to be the base on each log? Two. Two. That doesn't change. Okay, um, Jacob, what's going to be my art first argument? Five. Five. And my second argument? R to the third. R to the third. Okay, any questions up to that stuff? Okay, one more thing we have to do with this. It says express powers as factors. Okay. What that means is move the power in front. Okay. So the first part, that one's fine. Okay. What does the second part become? Uh, log, base log base 2 of r. Yep. Okay, if this was a um, multiple choice question on a test, I would probably have this one above the circled as a choice, but this is wrong. If it says to express powers as factors, just that means move the power in front. Okay. So that's the correct answer. Okay. Any question on that one? Let's try another. This one's pretty pretty basic. Um, there's really only one thing we have to do is decide if it splits as a plus or a minus. So Natalie, uh, how's this one going to split? Plus or minus? minus? And how do you know? Yeah, so we got division. Log, log, we already said base stays the same. And Analia, my first argument? Second argument? Two. That's it. Now, the only thing that could happen special here is don't, don't write what I'm going to write because I'm going to erase it in a second. But let's say this came out to 9. Right? Let's say that denominator happened to be a 9. What would log base 9 of 9 be? 1. one. Right? So then you could just write minus 1. Unless something special like that happens, you don't have to worry about simplifying it any further. Okay? These bases, are, there's no rule for this here, so we're just going to leave it. In fact, we don't even know how to type this in yet, log base 9. Okay, so there's nothing we can do. Right. And as I said before, it doesn't matter what base you use. You use base 9, base 2, or even what base am I using here? E. Right. You don't have to write it the long way. Just write it out with LNs. Right. Anyone think they can do the whole, whole thing in their head? Tell me the whole, whole final answer. Yeah. Yep. Um, Natalie? Um, would it be 3 ln to the y? Uh, just, just of y. y. Yep. Minus ln 8. Minus ln 8. That's it. So it becomes subtraction because of the division. The first argument would be y cubed. But then you've got to move the 3 in front. And that's it. OK, any question on that one? All 
right, let's, um, let's do this one. I'm just going to change one thing on it. Let's do this. All right, so this says ln of square root of x divided by x minus 1 cubed. All right, first thing I see overall here is a fraction bar. Okay, anytime I got a fraction bar, deal with that first. So split it up into two logs with subtraction. So then ln, ln. Uh, Brandon, what's my first argument? Uh, square root of x. Yep, and we're going to come back to that in a second. And Dakota, my second argument? x minus 1 to the third. x minus 1 to the third. All right. Two things I have to do. One of them a little more obvious than the other. Anybody tell me what, what I have to do here? Charlie? Change the square root of x to x to Yeah, change this to x to the 1 half. OK? Now, Charlie, why would we want to do that? So we can change it to a half power. Right, now we can put the 1 half in front. OK? If this is a problem on a test, and it asks you to write powers as factors, and you leave the final answer with a square root in it, this is wrong. You have to change that square root to a 1 half power, and then move it. Okay. And how about in the second half? Anything we got to do there? Do we have to write out x minus 1 times x minus 1 cubed? No. no, we don't have to do x minus 1 cubed. We'll yeah, move just move the 3 in front. And that's it. OK, so any questions on taking a log and breaking it down, kind of splitting it apart? All right, so if we can split it apart, if you reverse everything, we can combine it back together. OK, so this is a log that would have been a final answer in our last step. Now we're going to take and put it back as a single log. If we're going to recombine it, what do you think the first thing you would do here is? Think of the last thing you would have done to get this answer. Set back as a power. Put that back as a power. Okay, so move the 4 up. All right? So log base A7 plus log base A 3 to the 4th. Now, rather than just keep writing 3 to the 4th the whole time, let's just do that out and, and see what we get. Charlie? Okay, so 3 to the 4th power is 81. Okay, if you can do that, do it. It simplifies it a little bit. All right, now my last step is to decide if these two things should be multiplied together or divided. This time, it's multiplied. Okay, So it's log base A, 7 times 81, which is 567. <coughs> and that's our final answer. Do we have to multiply it, like with the 81? Yep. Yep, if you can multiply that, yep, just do that together. You can use your calculator if you need to. Okay, and once you've combined it together, this would be very hard to split apart. Okay, it's kind of like if I had the number 40 and said, well, how did I get 40? There's too many options. Maybe you did 2 times 20, maybe you did 10 times 4, 8 times 5. We don't know. So once you've recombined it, somebody just looking at this final answer, wouldn't know how to split it back apart the way you had it. Okay. Yep, that you have to get this as your final answer. Log base A, 567. Okay, any questions on that? All right, let's try this one. Okay, 
look, again, looking at that, anybody think they can tell me the entire answer in one step? Base three. That's it. That's the whole answer. This time it becomes a fraction because it was subtraction. And the two has to go back up as an exponent. That's it. Any questions on that one? Let's just go right to this one. Okay, this one looks looks like it could be really hard because there's four things in it, but it's it's really not. Everything that's a plus is going to get multiplied. Everything that's a minus, that goes in the denominator. So what when I recombine everything, what's going to be my base? A. I have x nine and x squared plus one. What am I doing with these three things? Am I going to multiply them or divide them? Multiply. multiply them, right? Because of those plus signs. Okay, those are going to recombine as multiplication. x times 9, we normally write this way. 9x times x squared plus 1. Okay, and when we have a minus, minus turns into division, division by in this case. That's it. Okay, the only thing they, um, they could have you do if, if they wanted, I would accept that answer, but you could distribute that out and write it that way too. Um, what's 9x times x squared? 9x cubed. And what's 9x times 1? 9x. I actually, I, I think I like that way better because it's factored. Both, both answers are correct. Okay, so any questions on taking logarithms that are separate and recombining? All right. When you're combining and splitting, you might see a problem that, let's go back to this one. It might say something like this in the book u is greater than 0, and v is greater than 0. Okay, If they say this, don't get confused by it. Yesterday, we talked about what kind of numbers you're allowed to plug in here and here. You can only use positives. That's all they're saying here. They're not going to use negatives. Because if they did, then your answers would be imaginary. Okay, We're not talking about that. All right, so this is just confirming to you that the problem they're giving to you is only going to use positive numbers. That's all. Any question on that? All right. And last, okay, change of base formula. So only two bases we know how to type in on the calculator, or at least that I've showed you, are 10 and E. To do base 10, you just press the log button. To do base E, what button do you press? The LM. Okay, very simple. But if we had something like this, and I just said, tell me what that is, if you know how to type it in, it's extremely simple. You just have to know how to type in a base 3 log, or, or any base. All right, so. Let's um, start out with this equation. Log base a of x equals y. Okay, I could use specific numbers like 3 and 4 if I wanted, but I just want to show you the formula in general. It doesn't actually matter what your base is or what your argument is. All right, um, let's change this to exponential form. Anybody tell me what this would be in exponential? 8 to the y equals x. 8 to the y equals, leave a little bit of space, 
and put X. Okay, any question on that? Right, now the next thing we're going to do, this is a trick you, you haven't seen before, but it's, it's going to come up a couple times this week. As long as you do the same thing to both sides, okay, that keeps your equation balanced, right? And that in Algebra 1. What I'm going to do is take the log of what's on the left and what's on the right. And that's perfectly fine to do as long as I do it on both sides. Okay, it's still, still balanced. And the reason I did that is because of what I can do now. What can I do on the left side now? That if I take away the word log, I can't do it. Think of one of our properties we just learned. Now I can put the y in front. If I don't have the word log, I can't do that. I put in the word log and I did it on each side, so I kept everything balanced. Now I can put the y in front. So now we have y log a equals log x. And remember, our whole goal is to figure out what does y equal. Okay, we're trying to get a formula with y by itself. But not like this, because we don't know how to type this in. Okay. What would be my um, last step here to get y by itself? Yeah. Divide by the log of a, whatever that is. Log of a and log of a. Okay, that cancels out. And now I have the formula y equals log x divided by <coughs> log a. Since I just wrote the word log, what base am I using? 10. And that's something we can type in. Okay, and don't forget what this was equal to way back at the beginning. Log base a of x. What I just circled is how you type that in on a calculator. Right? And that's called your change of base formula. Right. Um, so this is the change of base formula. Okay, if you want, I can rewrite it with the same letters. So I used A and X. So the version that I showed you guys was this top one right here, log x divided by log a. It actually doesn't matter if you use log or you use ln. It would come out the same way. I generally use that one, but it doesn't make a difference. All right, so this whole, this whole um, change of base formula all comes from that third rule that was really helpful, allowed us to put exponents in front, okay? and changing exponential to log form. All right, so let's try um, example four. Okay, log base five of 12. Okay, you don't have to tell me both ways. Just tell me one way I could rewrite this so I can type it in on my calculator. Log 12 over log five. That's it. And if they want the decimal, we just type it in. We've got log 12 divided by log 5. Just make sure you know how to type that in on yours. And if you did it correctly, you should get 1.5. If you decided to do it with ln, there's ln 12 divided by ln 5. When I hit enter, what should I get? Same doesn't matter which way you do it. It's 1.54. And last one we'll try is log base 3 of 16. Okay, 
Uh, Nick, can you tell me how I would rewrite that so I can type it in and you can do it either way? It doesn't matter. <coughs> Perfect. Log 16 over log 3. Does anybody need me to type it in and show you the decimal again? No? Okay. Um, on the test, I will ask you for the decimal. So just make sure you know how to, how to type it in. If you need that, that shows you how to type it in. Right there. Okay, so any questions on the change of base formula? All right, so today we looked at really three separate things. One, we started out with those four properties, which you're just recognizing a pattern. Second thing, we learned how to combine and split logs. Third thing, change of base formula. All right. So for tonight, uh, homework is in 7.3 on page 485. Okay. On 7 to 15, uh, I just want you to do odds, 31 to 33, okay, do all. And then 39, 40, 51, 52, and 65 to 69 odd. Okay, we'll go over that tomorrow. Uh, we'll finish seven, we'll start and finish seven four, and then we have our test on Thursday. Test on Thursday. I will see you guys in here for probably 10 minutes or so before the assembly. If I get the test graded, I can give you your grades on Friday. Okay.